Hello everyone, it's Laura Jane. Welcome to the Artistry by Altenew Artist Tubes Video Hop. There are 10 colors in this release. I've created quite a few projects using the Artist Watercolor. This is the first set of tubes that I have ever used. I am a frugal crafter, so being able to just put a little dab of paint and using it all up 100% before it dries is definitely right up my alley. Here are my first impressions of the watercolor tubes. So let's swatch all the tube colors. This is 140 pound watercolor cardstock. I put a daub of paint straight to that paper and just brushed it around full strength and then took that paint over to another larger droplet from a stencil from Altenew and added clean water to see how it blends out. Now, if this color swatching is just too quick for you, you can always slow down this video by going to the three dots in the settings. After the watercolor was dried, I added each name to the swatch card. I am storing those tubes in a watercolor case. Simply removed the insert that would normally hold a half pans or full pans, set that aside, closed up the case, and there's my stored solution for these 10 tubes. I'm excited to show you a couple of projects that I made for this video hop. So let's get to it. This is what I'm calling the purple dot butterfly. I have a panel of paper that I just smooshed some of the colors on when I was playing with them initially, putting just little daubs of that paint straight from the tube to the paper, phyllo blue, and quinacridone magenta. And I take my flat watercolor brush, large watercolor brush, and I am fanning that color out, touching the dots of color with a nice wet brush and creating what I think looks like the top of butterfly wings or a ribbon, a bow. So it's a hair bow with a body in the middle. All right, so I just played with the tip of that brush to create a little bit of laciness on that wing giving it a little bit more shape, trying not to overthink it. I was fascinated with the kind of colors that uh, could be achieved simply by using those two tubes. This is 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock, and I think the color moved famously. I thought it just was so lovely how the, the color from the tubes moved on just regular cardstock. Now, once my butterfly shape was dry, I came in with the fine tip markers. This is the brush tip, and I'm just adding in doodles, scribblings, just randomly trying not to overthink this too much, just to give the wings of the butterfly a little bit more structure. Then I have some of that color left over on my palette here, and I'm filling in the lower wings, kind of giving more shadow. And again, just trying to add a little bit more depth, just very quickly, and even allowing myself to go outside the lines on this one. I wanted to continue to add quite a bit of dark, colors underneath those top wings so that it gives a little bit more dimension. Now this is the fun part. This is my favorite uh, tube I think out of the whole bunch is that titanium white. Obviously perfect for splatter but as you can see as I'm adding this is going to be perfect for the detail work, a little bit more of whimsical accents. I wanted to make sure that the uh, watercolor that I had just added for depth of those wings was dry, so I, I took a paper towel and made sure it was completely dry before I added the titanium white. This is the smallest of the fine detail brushes. I think it's a 3.0. And I am just, again, randomly adding some dots along the edge of the wings. The titanium white 
is opaque. If you mix the titanium white with the other tubes, it changes the opacity of the color. After uh, I thought I had enough of the white uh, titanium, I, I grabbed that brush tip pen again and added a little bit more pen detail and doodles and come back in with the white titanium, kind of highlight those little antlers. Ha, huh, not antlers. Deer have antlers, butterflies have antenna. My granddaughter would tell me that. So here is the finished butterfly. I love how it turned out on that uh, smooshed background. It was a lot of fun to just throw caution to the wind, not overthink, and create this little beauty. Once everything was dry, that titanium white, again, I wanted to add a little bit more detail, so I quickly came in with that dark purple mix, purple and blue, added a little bit more depth on the wings because I have difficulty stopping and leaving well enough alone. But here you are. This is my finished butterfly. And next to a more controlled butterfly, that is, I will be releasing a video later on with that more controlled butterfly later. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can catch that. And for my next project, we are going to watercolor sunflower posy. Using all the colors from the tubes, now we're going to create brown, starting with that permanent yellow deep, tuladine red, and phthalo green. All those together makes the best brown. And I know how to make brown. <laughs> All right, so I just start out like making the center of this sunflower, daubing on some color, and I wanted to add a little bit of uh, variation to that color, so I grabbed that Opera Lemon, which looks neon, but it truly it brightens up everything, and added a little bit more variation. When I was happy with the center of the sunflower, I moved on to mixing some color for the petals. Starting out with that permanent yellow deep and then the red. Little hint of the opera lemon. And adding a lot of water. As my brush goes off to the side, I'm grabbing clean water to dilute that pigment. Well, this is a number four fine detail brush. And here is my single stroke for my petals. Lay that brush down, push, and pull back. I follow a lot of people on Instagram that do one-stroke watercolor reels. This one in particular comes from Lisa Lamb. Thank you, Lisa, for the free instruction. Her Instagram account is B-L-U-E dot L-I-S-A-R-T. Find her there and you can see the reel that I followed along with in order to create this piece. All right, so now I'm mixing a little bit lighter color. I want more of yellow for this, a side flower up here. So I added a lot more of that opera lemon to the permanent yellow deep. And I continued on with more petals on the full bloom here. Again, just that single stroke, adding more petals on top, kind of varying, putting the, the lighter colored ones in between the others. And now my panel, I'm not allowing it to dry in between here because I want to see how the colors kind of run together. Off to the side here, I have two containers of water. And here I'm flicking on some of that darker color at the base of each of the petals for the side. And now that the center is a little bit more dried, I'm coming back in with some more of the brown. You can always deepen the color in the brown by adding a uh, violet, more reds, adding a little bit more depth and detail to the base of the yellow blooms here, yellow petals, and then moving on down to some of the stem. I've added more of the phthalo green for the stem. 
trying not to overthink this. It's really difficult for me, but I kept pressing forward. I wanted to get this done in a fairly decent amount of time. So adding more of the green, uh, the phthalo green, in order to make some just kind of sloppy looking leaves here. Uh, just kind of questioning my placement of the leaves. Not super happy with that, but uh, whenever I'm in doubt, I just add another layer of color and a wiggle. <laughs> so again, I need help with my single stroke leaf. I'm trying to keep this in almost real time for you, but again, you can always speed it up. So I've added a lot more water to the greens here in order to have um, some little sprays off to the side in different color variations here. So I have a lot of water in my brush and uh, lightened those greens up. Trying to make a couple of wisps here and there. And I do keep going back to the larger leaves and trying to salvage those. So now we're going on to the purple. So I have uh, grabbed the three top colors here with the violet and the two blues, the Prussian blue and the phyllo blue, and created a really just a, a scrumptious uh, grape color, I think. And just dropping my brush down and pulling straight up. And I found a really fun technique, again, on Instagram, where if I think my color on the paper is, is too much, just with a brush and a paper towel, you just grab the color and wipe it off on the paper towel to lift that color up. It's a fun technique. It leaves the outline of the color, but not the intensity of the pigment. So that's what I'm doing on these little purple, uh, I don't know what you want to call those kind of flowers. They're, they're all kind of imaginary flowers here. So I added a little bit more of the blue into the purple to add, uh, to kind of, I'm trying to make like a periwinkle color. And I just kind of plopped that down into each of the areas where the grape blooms are. And then I mixed in a little bit of browns here, kind of trying to add little detailed stems, changed into more of a detailed brush there. Do my mixing with a larger brush and then come in and actually add it to my painting with more of the detailed tips. So here I'm mixing up for the jar or the vase that these are in. So I use that dark cyan and a lot of water. Lots of water because I wanted more of a just kind of a smoky blue. Kind of trying to get the shape of the jug. There. And being careful not to get into the leaves because they are still wet and I didn't want color to run. Trying to keep highlight uh, so it gives a, the jug a little bit of a dimension. So lots of water in that area. So there's a bit of highlight. I am happy with that shape. It's, uh, pleasing to me at this time. And so I'm going back in and grabbing where the majority of the pigment of the cyan is to create a little bit more shadows. And then adding more off to the left. And now I'm mixing some more of the brown 
using number one fine detail brush to stipple on some details from the center of the sunflower. Just random dots, uh, trying to kind of congregate the dots towards the bottom, leaving a bit of a highlight in the middle, give uh, some dimension. And then adding some stem detail on the purples. I don't know what color what kind of flowers those would be. Just some bluebells. I don't know <laughs> what they would be called. And then I grab some of the deep red and just quickly flicking on a little bit more detail on the original petals of the sunflower. Getting more of that a phthalo blue, lots of water, and dropping those into the purple flowers just to add more color variation. I'm just thrilled with the way these colors uh, layer on top of each other. Adding more detail to that jug, getting a little bit of shadowing. Having more of the blues for the shadow. I'm trying to get maybe a little bit more distinction and detail on the bluebell or the violet flowers here. So this is number two fine detail brush. And I am mixing greens to get more variation in the uh, wisps. I'm trying to get that uh, the sprays of green to be a little bit more varied in color. Sometimes I go over uh, previous strokes um, as well as adding other strokes so that the colors vary for interest. Create an illusion of another large leaf out there to the to the very right side, just kind of for balance. Just fiddled with the larger leaves for far too long, I think. It's not very happy with those. And then anytime I want to think, I add more wisps <laughs> up to the sprays up top. Thinking wisps. Notice I didn't come back to that uh, yellow flower at all. I thought it was uh, just perfect on its side. That I'm truly happy with. And now here I am going to be mixing up a little bit of brown, more brown, very, very watered down to give that jug or the vase something to sit on, give it ground it, so to speak. Now, this is a satin masking tape from Artistry by Altenew. Just peels off perfectly. And then here is the finished project. So remember, this is part of Video Hop that there's over a $300 worth of prizes. All you need to do is comment uh, in the comment section below. I would love it if you would subscribe. That way you can see more of the projects that I made using these tubes. Thanks for hanging in there. I know this is a long video. We'll catch you next time. Bye.